So the rotator cuff is a group of tendons um, that uh, encapsulate the joint. They sit around the ball and socket part of the shoulder joint, uh, with one being at the front of the shoulder, one above and two at the back, and they effectively give a, an envelope of uh, muscular tenderness support to the shoulder that allow it to move in different directions. So rotator cuff can get injured in multitude of ways. Um, they can be uh, wear and tear processes that progressively deteriorate with age and this is often seen in patients over the age of 50 and is fairly common but in the younger age groups it generally happens as a result of sports which more often than not is as a result of contact sports such as rugby but also can happen as a result of repetitive overhead sports such as playing high level tennis uh, and uh, basketball and other sports that involves repetitive activities and the nature of injury can vary slightly but the tendons are nevertheless injured as a result of this. The symptoms of rotator cuff injury are very similar to the symptoms of shoulder bursitis which effectively it's a catching pain that people experience when they are uh, moving the shoulder in a certain direction which classically is side elevation uh, when they get beyond a certain point and also doing other activities such as getting the arm behind the back to tuck the trousers in or getting to the bra strap and also trying to put a jacket on with the arm in an outward direction. And these symptoms uh, are generally not necessarily associated with any stiffness of the shoulder joint, which is what differentiates these symptoms from a frozen shoulder. To avoid um, these injuries, uh, it's very important you maintain a very good uh, flexibility and mobility within the shoulder joint. Often the repetitive uh, uh, process of doing a certain movement uh, creates certain tightnesses within the joint itself whilst loosening in other aspects and trying to balance that out by doing appropriate stretches is critical. Also as with any uh, exercise it's important to warm up the muscles and the tendons before strenuous exercise and therefore I cannot recommend highly enough the importance of warming up properly and also cooling down properly after any exercise session. So the rotator cuff injuries uh, are treated based on what caused them in the first place. Um, as we highlighted earlier, the commonest cause tends to be degenerative uh, changes uh, within the tendon, so it's a wear and tear process. And in these situations, we always start with conservative measures, which has a very high success rate. This involves activity modification, taking analgesia, having appropriate physiotherapy to address postural issues and to build up the right mu uh, muscle, muscle groups around the shoulder and also, if need be, can proceed to steroid injections, which are often a very good way of controlling the inflammation within the shoulder joint, which can further facilitate the rehabilitation process. In cases where conservative measures fail, or in cases where direct trauma has led to a traumatic tear of the rotator cuff tendon, then often surgery is indicated, uh, and this is a process that can be done in different ways, either arthroscopically or through open approaches, and that depends on the nature of the injury and the preference of your surgeon.